Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly. I'm your host, Chris Wright. Today, our topic is finding yourself, being your true, authentic self, finding joy in that space. Um, ask yourself, are you in a rut? Like, do you keep doing the same things over and over and over again, like hoping to get different results? Are you unhappy in your career or in your job? You know, are you finding satisfaction in your home and family life? Are you grumpy, like lashing out at people all the time? Are you just being an asshole or do you just simply lack empathy for others? Um, you know, do you wake up in a shitty mood and you just can't wait to go back to sleep? Whether it's take a nap or you, you go to bed early. Is that you? If that's you, we're going to talk about how to get out of that rut. Some of that could be mental illness. And if that's your case, um, I am not talking about you. I'm just talking about others who just can't figure it out. We're going to talk about that on the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly when I come back. See you on the other side. This is the Real Estate Happy Hour, and I'm your host, Chris Wright. It's a fun place where we talk real estate, pop culture, and what's trending. Hey, I might even give you some good advice. So grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and take a listen. Unless you're driving, of course. I'll see you guys on the other side. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are back with the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly. Again, I'm your host, Chris Wright. So I um, was listening to the Game Changers podcast by Molly Fletcher. It's a really, really good podcast. If you need to add something to your library of podcasts, make sure you listen to Game Changers with Molly Fletcher. She used to be a sports agent. And recently she interviewed Jen Gottlieb. Now, I don't know if you know the name, but Jen used to be a, a VH1 um, host of a heavy metal show. I can't, can't remember the name of it. So I kind of, when I heard the name, I said, I, that sounds familiar because I'm a big MTV VH1 guy. love music. I'm a DJ. So that kind of, um, when she did that, I, I, I kind of recall, but I never watched the show because I'm not a heavy metal head. Anyway, Jen Gottlieb, she's a public speaker now. She's a motivator. Um, she's a business coach. She does all these things that just, you would think going from a metal head, TV rocker star to um, an inspirational, motivational coach is, wow, worlds apart. But um, she's done it because she's found herself. And I want to talk about that today. Um, but on this podcast, she discussed her new book. Uh, it's called Be Seen. You know, find your voice, build your brand, live your dream. Highly recommend it. Go out and get that uh, book or listen to it on Audible. I'm going to tag Jen Gottlieb on this and make sure, hey, hopefully she'll she'll notice. Anyway, um, but I've been listening to this Audible book on repeat continuously. I've already finished it once and I just keep it going because a lot of the fears and apprehensions and things that have kept me from being more um, and chasing and fulfilling my goals and desires and dreams. Um, she hits the nail on the head in this book. And by hearing her talk about it, um, it's going to be it's going it's been helping me. So um, in this interview with Molly Fletcher, uh, Jen talks about when she was at a low point in her life and her mom gave her the best advice. And you know what that advice was? Find yourself. Find yourself. Two words. And while it sounds easy, it can be extremely hard. You know, again, if you suffer from mental illness, depression, social anxiety, I get it. Those things are real and they exist and you're going to have to have to seek help um, to deal with those things. But if you just don't, if you just can't figure it out, it could also mean that you've lost yourself. So I'm going to take Jen Gottlieb's advice and I'm going to find it. All right. So your life could be a total and complete fake and you don't even realize it. Because you've been faking for so long, you don't even know who you are. You don't know what you are. You don't know what your your desires are, your joys. Because sometimes you may have to go as far back as childhood, five, six years old, 
you know, what things did you do back then that brought you joy? High school, college, you know, who is the authentic you? Now, the word authentic, it gets tossed around a lot these days. But what does it really mean? So you're, it's, it's your true to, you know, it's being true to your own personality, you know, your values and your spirit, you know, regardless of the, of the pressures that you might be under to act otherwise, you're honest with yourself and you're honest with others and you take responsibility for your mistakes. You know, your it's your values, your ideas and all your actions align. That's authenticity. That's being authentic. I'm going to tell you a little story about me. Okay. And I'm going to go way back. When I was about 14 years old, um, me and my cousins, we wanted to be gangsters. Not gangsters in, you know, a mob sense or mafia sense today. You know, like people say, I did, we didn't want to be, you know, John Gotti or Scarface. We didn't want to be like the Bloods or the Crips or Ice Cube with Boys in the Hood. We wanted to be gangsters like Pretty Boy Floyd and John Dillinger, Bonnie and Clyde. We used to watch Humphrey Bogart movies and James James Cagney and Edward G. Robinson. The gangster movies from the 30s and the 40s and early 50s. And they were in black and white. Like the Maltese Falcon was one of my favorite films of all time. Love, love, love The Godfather. But um, one thing about those 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 people is that they wore suits and shiny shoes and trench coats and fedora hats. So at 14 years old, me and my cousin, we would actually go to stores and buy that stuff. Ask our mom for money or you know, work a little on the side and gain a couple of money. And we could get fedoras for like seven or eight bucks or maybe $14. And we would buy a fedora. Then for Christmas or our birthday, we would ask our parents for a trench coat. And when we got our school clothes, we would get shiny wingtip shoes. And um, some, we would even put taps on the back. So when we walked, it clicked. I'll never forget till 14 years old. When we went to school, we were considered like the best dressed because we wore slacks. We didn't wear jeans or khakis. We wore slacks with pointy shoes and trench coats and button down shirts way before we should have been. We didn't carry book bags. We carried briefcases and we would have our books. And then, you know, we met a couple of other guys in the school that wanted to be just like that. So we had a little crew and we used to call ourselves the Get Fresh Crew. And we we had our briefcases and sometimes we had briefcases with nothing in it but a couple pieces of paper. And we would pose and take pictures with Polaroids. You know what Polaroids are, right? Um, but that's who we pretended to be. And that's who we wanted to emulate was those gangster style best dressed suit and tie guys. Um, so then, you know, a few years later, college came. And when I went to college, when I graduated, graduated from high school, rap music had just come into existence. We're talking, I was class of 1982. And rap music had just come out. If you remember Rapper's Delight. Well, I should say it had, it had just come out to radio. In New York City for a long time, it had already been underground on mixtapes and um, pe sell it, people selling it out of their cars and stuff like that. But the radio got a hold of Rapper's Delight. And I was in Philadelphia and I was introduced to hip hop. And... I wanted to be just like those guys who did hip hop. I wanted to be a New Yorker. I wanted some of that Bronx and Brooklyn swagger. I wore Lee jeans, Kengo hats, shell toe Adidas, thick gold chains. They were fake. Um, I had the personalized name belt buckles and I wanted to learn New York slang and talk with a New York accent. All right. So, but the one thing that I enjoyed most, that wasn't me. The gangster wasn't me. The New York hip hopper wasn't me. Even though I dressed like that and acted like that, I liked books. I used to read all the time. I liked documentaries. I used to like Howard Cosell. He was one of my favorite analysts, uh, sports analysts. I liked Muhammad Ali because he talked and he always was talking and boasting and bragging. I didn't like the boasting and bragging part as much, but I did like the fact that 
he always talked. I loved talkers. I used to love 60 Minutes, Dateline, any, any place that I could hear people talking and sharing stories and teaching and training. I love that stuff. I used to love PBS shows, PBS documentaries. I still watch those to this day. And so I was, was I being my true authentic self when I was being a gangster or when I wanted to be a hip hopper? No, even at age 25, I call that the black empowerment movement. This is when um, young black men and women, teenagers and college students um, started learning about Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and Mar Marcus Garvey and Harriet Tubman. And we started getting knowledge of self and groups like Public Enemy were popular in Boogie Down Productions and KRS-One, um, the Muslims, the Five Percenters, Big Daddy Kane. And we wore like X hats and African daishikis and wore like leather African pendants. And, you know, Bo Jackson was really popular back then. And uh, he had this advertising campaign for Nike cross training. And it, and he's, it was like Bo knows. And it was talking about all these things that Bo knew. Well, they also had a t-shirt called Bo knows racism. But anyway, it was, it was this time of empowerment and a Renaissance period for young black men and women. And then all of a sudden, I became that person. I was into it, you know? It's the blackest I'd ever, ever been, actually. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it's true. Um, from an identity standpoint, you know, I embraced it. Uh, I was reading black literature. I was learning black history. I even became a Muslim and joined a mosque. Um, I had listened to the teachings of uh, various Muslim sects, and um, including the Nation of Islam, led by Louis Farrakhan, who I learned a ton, fr a ton from. Um, because he also was about black empowerment and, you know, learning um, who you are and how to be, you know, self-sufficient and self-reliant. Unfortunately, you know, the visions of the Nation of Islam, it didn't align, you know, with my embracing of humanity, regardless of race, uh, because there are, were a lot of um, white relationships that I grew up with. Because, face it, I went to predominantly white schools most of my life. So I didn't get that part, but I did learn about other things, um, being with those brothers uh, in the Nation of Islam. But again, some of our ideas didn't align, but I digress. That's not important about this. But who am I? And did I ever know, you know, um, Jim Gottlieb talks about going back to what gives you joy. What makes you happiest? When are you the most real? And for her, you know, for instance, it was dancing and singing. You know, what was it for me? So um, I'd been a, chame a chameleon for so long. I had to really think about this. I'm like, God, who am I? What brings me joy? But, you know, knowing how to blend in with societal groups, whether they're your own or not, you know, knowing how to change, it put me in like circles of life and friendships and even intimate relationships that had I not been a chameleon, had I not easily blended in, I might not have had those experiences. So I'm not saying that, that it's all bad, but you still need to know who you are. You need to find yourself. All those things that I talked about, be it being a gangster or being a hip hopper or being in the black empowerment movement, those things didn't bring me joy or comfort or contentment or satisfaction, you know? During the times that I was being a fake or a fraud, the things that, in, that I enjoyed most involved learning. And as I said, watching documentaries, then I would pretend sometimes to be a narrator or pretend sometimes to hold a microphone in my hand and teach others, pretend to be a sports analyst like Howard Cosell. I would pretend to be Muhammad Ali. You know, I DJed at a college radio station in my freshman year and I got joy out of that. I loved it. I loved it more than anything. I was supposed to be at class and I would be taking other guys' shifts at the radio station. They'd be like, hey, Chris, can you take my shift? Because I got a class I forgot about. I'm like, absolutely. And I would skip the class and go and sit in the booth at the radio station on college, the college campus. I love talking on a microphone, you know. And today when I DJ and talk to my audience, that's when I'm happiest. That's when I get the most joy. When I'm in front of groups, training or speaking or, you know, sharing ideas with others. 
I love it. You know, and doing this right now, this whole podcasting YouTube thing, I'm not doing it to get clicks. I'm not doing it checking how many views it got or if you guys are watching it, watching it on TikTok or Instagram. I'm doing it because it's therapeutic. It's cathartic for me. It's I'm getting joy out of doing what I love. And what's kept me from doing it in the past? Mostly fear. You know, what are people going to think about me? How do I look? How do I sound? Like today, I got a, a scratchy throat. <clears> throat. I've been talking a little too much. I was DJing recently. I was MCing. I had a lot of real estate customers, long conversations on the phone. And my voice right now is just not what it should be. I, I could be losing it. I don't know. But I would worry about that in the past. I don't sound right. I would record 45 minutes of video and just scratch it and throw it away. I don't have the best grammar. I don't enunciate words the best sometimes. Sometimes, like last week, I did a, a podcast and I used the word just instead of jest. And someone called me out on it. Like, you mean just or jest? I meant jest, but I said just. But I don't care. I'm in my zone. Jen Gottlieb called being in your pocket or being in pocket. But I'm I'm doing what I love to do. It's You could call it hobby related. But there are some people who have become very wealthy just doing what they love. Um, I'm going to make mistakes when I talk and I'm not going to go back and edit it. I'm not going to edit it out. You are getting the true authentic me just as if you were sitting in front of me having a conversation because I don't care. I just keep doing it and I'll get better. I'll become, you know, a Joe Rogan, maybe who knows. But again, it's not my goal. My goal is just to be my true, authentic self doing what I love when I'm talking to you, sharing what's on my mind. And I truly believe that this there's this entire population of people that just get joy out of talking to others and sharing the Joe Rogans, the Dave Portnoy's, all of those retired athletes who have podcasts. We find joy in sharing and talking to others. So no matter what your joy is, find it. And do that. So I'm going to tell you about the love of my life. Her name is real estate. I love real estate so much. All right. She she's my jam. I get to meet people and talk to people and teach people and share stories. I meet families. I make a ton of new friends. I get to teach all of that. Um, so but a few years ago, I had become tired and disenchanted with real estate and she just wasn't looking pretty and she was nagging me and she was working me to death and I was tired so I broke up with her I didn't appreciate her anymore but I, and I didn't treat her right I didn't do the things that I needed to do to have a healthy relationship with her so I cheated on real estate and I got a job so my new girlfriend was with the HVAC industry. That means, you know, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. I've never been mechanical in my life. I don't know what I was thinking, right? Totally different, but new, shiny, bling, new people, new environment, had a beautiful office, worked around very successful people, learned a ton. I don't regret it because now, um, and I'll, I'll tell you more in a second anyway, but this new girlfriend called HVAC, she just did not bring me happiness. She did bring me money. She bought me new experiences, but it was, there was no contentment there. It bored me. I'd never been a mechanical guy in my life. I had no desire to learn mechanical, no desire to work in it. I was actually cheating that industry because I wasn't giving it all that I have and it wasn't giving me any joy. What I, th what I thought I'd be doing in the industry and what I was actually doing were two totally different things. And I really started to mix my, miss my ex-girlfriend real estate. So I called real estate up and I asked for a date. And we sat down and talked about it and we figured it out. And so we got back together. And real estate, she told me why I got in a rut and why we broke up. And she said, this time, if we're going to be together, I need you to be authentic. I need you to do the things you love around our relationship. So here we are. I'm back into real estate and I'm finding myself and I'm sharing with you 
and I'm not giving a damn about how it sounds or what I look like. I'm in a hoodie right now. I'm in a Peloton ball cap, right? I'm not going to pretend to be other than my true authentic self every day, every minute. And it's working for me. And I'm selling houses and I'm meeting new people and I'm getting leads and I'm lead generating and I'm, I'm cold calling because I get on the phone and I'm just my true authentic self. I'm being invited to be on other people's podcasts and talk. I'm being invited to train and talk to groups and other brokers because I, that's what I love doing. And it's all encompasses real estate and I love it. So I'm loving real estate again. She's my girl, but in a new and refreshing way. So, you know, if you're not enjoying your career or your life, uh, find yourself. Either find a career that includes, you know, doing the thing that you love or making sure you do the things that you love around your career. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we want to talk about the grind, the grind. You know, I always see on social media, all of them, Facebook, Instagram, people like I'm, I'm grinding, grinding. What do you know about the grind? I, I guess it just means that you're working and that's all you think about. That's all you do. That's all you live for is the grind. Putting in those long hours. And I always laugh. I to me it's laughable that people say if you do, if you don't if you're not about the grind, you're not gonna be successful. You know, the reason you are who you are and I am who I am is because you won't do what I do. <laughs> How many times have you heard that, right? Like whatever. I even see, you know, athletes and hip hop artists and um people making videos. You gotta put in work, you gotta put in the work. While it's true, life is not just about the grind. You know, you guys out there putting in these long hours, you're telling your audience that, you know, you're working available seven days a week. Call me anytime. You know, I'm I'm here to help you. I don't watch TV. You're special because you don't watch TV. I haven't had time to watch TV. You know, I haven't vacationed in five years. I'm hustling. I'm on vacation, but I'm still working. <laughs> you know, okay. Bless your heart. I got that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 grind. But at what expense, guys? At what expense? You know, where, when, are you, when are you spending time with your family? When are you networking? When are you reconnecting with friends? Because all that's important too. And you're not reconnecting with friends because it's part of the grind. You know, um, you're reconnecting with your friends because it's important to your life. You know, when are you calling your extended family, your siblings, your, your mother, your father, your, your uncles, your aunts, when are you reconnecting with them outside of just on Facebook? You know, when, um, what about, you know, extended weekends or vacations or attending your kids' life events like gymnastics or football or softball? Or are you at those events working? You know, my daughter does piano. My daughter does gymnastics. I have one in cosmetology. I have one in college. So I have to make sure that I parse my time and say, you know what, if I'm going to see my daughter at college, I, you know, maybe I'll peek at my phone every now and then, but I can't go see my daughter in college whip out the laptop and go, you guys do what you're doing. I'm going to work, you know, unless something very urgent comes up with a client. But, um, yeah, you need to set boundaries. You got to let people know what's important to you, be it family or hobbies or working out, fitness, yoga. Are you in a book club? Do you play pickleball, tennis, golf? Go fishing, whatever those things are. Put your phone on, do not disturb, and do those things. And show yourself on social media doing those things. People appreciate your grind, but they also appreciate that you have other hobbies and other interests. Watch some TV. Talk about the series that you're currently watching. Right now, I'm watching The Gilded Age. I'm all into it. I like Downton Abbey and I'm watching the Gilded, Gilded Age. A lot of people in my circle don't watch that. So when I share that I'm watching the Gilded Age, people say, 
Ooh, I've always wanted to watch that. I'm so glad you mentioned it. And then they see me a little differently. All right. They don't see me. It's just I'm on the grind. I'm on the grind. So, you know, take some time out, watch TV, you know, work on the things that give you joy, as I mentioned in the last segment. And stop using I don't have time as a reason. I don't have time. We all have the same amount of time in a day and how we use it is what makes us different. You know, how, how we use it doesn't always lead to success. Your grind doesn't always lead to success because you're so burnt out. You're so worn out. You're going to burn out and you're going to stop enjoying what you do. Just like I broke up with real estate and decided to go back and do it differently. Right. So, you know, I know. So now I Netflix and chill and I'm not afraid to put my phone on. Do not disturb. I'm not afraid to take time off or time away right now. While I'm doing this YouTube video and this podcast, I'm not looking at my phone, which is right there, but it's on do not disturb. I could always answer it and then edit this video and get back to it because that's the grind. You got to get mentally and physically healthy. You know, you need to put as much focus on your leisure as you put in on your work. That's all, guys. Thanks for joining the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly. That's all I got. I'm hoping to get a couple of guests in here soon. But you guys take care until next time. Have a good one. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly with Chris Wright. Um, Listen, if you like what I'm doing, please don't forget on the podcast, give me five stars. Um, Give me a thumbs up and like and subscribe on YouTube. Make sure that you're liking my Instagram videos and following me and all that stuff. Not because I think I'm great or I want to be popular. It just helps the algorithm. And if I could help one person or two people, that's that's all I want to do. Um, If I can just share my ideas with others, that's all I want to do. So help the algorithm get my message out there. But it's on all the uh, podcast app that you um, platforms that you listen to, whether it's Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. Make sure that you go there and check it out. YouTube, same thing. I'm also doing clips on Instagram, LinkedIn, and um, TikTok, and probably a couple other platforms as well, Facebook Reels, but wherever you can do it. If you want to be a guest on the show, you want to be interviewed, I do that as well. So reach out to me and make sure you ask me, hey, Chris, I'd love to be on your show. Um, Then I want to make sure that happens as well. All right, guys. Thank you so much and just wanted to put it out there. Like, subscribe, give me five stars. Talk to you guys later. Thanks.